for Creamer Media's Policy, I'm Sash Nimudli. Author Nadia Hashimi joins me to discuss her book, A House Without Windows. Tell us a bit about what your book, A House Without Windows, is about. So A House Without Windows is a book about a character named Zeba. And Zeba is a very ordinary woman living in an unnamed but regular village in Afghanistan. Now what happens to Zeba is that one day there is a commotion within the confines of their home and the neighborhood descends upon her and they find Zeba there. And Zeba is sitting against the, the wall of her home and next to her is her husband's dead body and he's been found with a hatchet to the back of his head. He's been murdered and his blood is on Zeba's hands. And she is very quickly accused of murdering her husband. She's not saying much in her own defense and she's whisked off to prison. And while she's in prison, she meets several women, her cellmates, who are imprisoned for crimes of immorality. And she starts to get to know them and why they've been brought there for being accused of things like adultery, being seen out with a man that they're not married to. And we start to try to pick apart exactly what happened in Zeba's house that day. Did she murder her husband and her mother, who is a sorceress in the arts of black magic and an Afghan-American Western-trained lawyer try to come in, figure out what happened, and see if there's a way to save Zeba. Take us through the character development of your main characters, Zeba and Yusuf. Zeba was an was a interesting character to develop. She really, for me, represents the essence of an Afghan woman, someone who is doing everything she can to hold her family together, to make sure that her children are cared for, to make sure that her home life is stable and her husband is happy. And when she's faced with adversity, when she's faced with a real challenge, she then shows that she has a strength she herself did not even imagine that she had. And, and kind of crafting this character, putting her in this situation, and then watching how she struggles to find a way to rise out of it and save not just herself, but the people around her, was, uh, was a really fun exercise for me and really, for me, reflected what's happening in Afghanistan. And Yusuf? Yusuf was another fun character because I think one concept that I have not yet explored is the, the idea of people who are very connected to Afghanistan, either because they were born there or because their family comes from Afghanistan, but living abroad, being educated abroad, and, and that tie that really never cuts off. And Yusuf has this really strong desire, this flame inside of him that connects him to the homeland. And he has a real interest in wanting to do something for his homeland, to be part of the country's future. But he is approaching it with his Western mentality. And as much as he feels like he's as Afghan as anyone living in Afghanistan, he does have something that's been tempered because so much has happened in Afghanistan while he was away. So he goes back and tries to figure out how he can fit into this puzzle that is the, the Afghan justice system. Tell us about your interest in Afghanistan and your research for this book. My interest in Afghanistan really stems from my country, my, my family coming from Afghanistan. And therefore, we have watched over the years everything that's happened in the country. We've watched what's transpired politically with the wars, with the invasions, with the, the economic depravity that people have been going through. And we have not been able to turn away from it. We have family that lives there. Uh, and we're just connected because I know that it's a place that my parents came from, that they have such a vested interest in following what's happening there. And so when I wanted to sit down and write, out of Afghanistan's hardship, out of that really dark past that we have, there are so many stories that really highlight humanity, that showcase how people are strong, resilient, and they're really fighting for their lives. And I thought that was something so compelling for me to write about. You are a pediatrician. Where did your interest for writing develop? I think my interest for writing really came from my love for reading. I love words, I love stories, and I love how stories can connect us with other people, with other countries and cultures, and, and you can sit in a chair and travel. And I think stories also help you learn about yourself. When you reflect on a character and what that character is doing in that particular situation, you start to ask questions about yourself of, of what I would do in that person's shoes. And that for me was that leap into writing, was taking that love for words and, and trying to do what I've seen authors do in the books that I've loved and trying to do it in my own way and find my own style. What are the major themes of this book? I think the major themes of this book are the struggle 
for independence, for autonomy, and how we fit into the world around us. That's really what Zabo is trying to do, is figure out how she can exert some autonomy, have some agency in her life. Things just seem to be happening around her. Things are thrown at her. And she is trying so hard to find control over it. And for her mother, Golnaz, it's the same. Her mother is somebody who practices this art of black magic. And, and that's something that gives her some control over the circumstances around her. If she doesn't like the way people are treating her, well, Golnaz has a, a couple of tricks up her sleeve and maybe she can turn things around and, and change fate in her direction. That's one of the major themes. Another one is justice. And how are women able to find justice in their lives? Uh, and that's something that the judicial system in Afghanistan is currently reforming to be more fair towards the treatment of women and to have a set of rules that will apply to everyone uh, uniformly across the country. Are you trying to highlight specific issues through the book? And if so, what are they? In my book, I'm always trying to highlight some kind of issue. This is where I get to voice my concern about things that are happening in the world around me. Specifically in this story, I talk about women in the judicial system in Afghanistan and how it's a system that's really skewed towards finding women guilty. Luckily, there are a lot of reforms going on now to change that kind of a situation. But I don't just want to talk about the judicial system and women in Afghanistan. And I think that's part of what we do with stories is look at a different country, but then pause and take a second and look inward and see what's happening in our own backyards. And I want to start questioning what is the relationship between the judicial system in, a, in the Western world? For me, it's looking at what's happening in the court system in the United States, specifically when it's looking at a woman's case. And so for a case like rape, you know, why are we asking questions of what was she wearing? What was she doing? We're really asking questions about how complicit she was in a crime when it's really a crime against an individual. Tell us about the significance of the title, A House Without Windows. The book title is not something that I came up with. I have now four books to my name and I have not titled one of them, I'm sad to say. But I think the titles that, uh, that I have are beautiful and they come from my agent who is able to find just the right poem to really represent and capture the essence of the story. And A House Without Windows does that. It comes from a line of Sufi poetry and uh, by a poet no known usually as Rumi. And what this poem has done is just, it creates that idea that there is a house without windows. And those windows representing, which uh, this is my interpretation and poems are up for many different kinds of interpretations, but the window letting in that light, being that optimism, that hope that somebody would have. And sometimes we think of a house without windows as being very dark, confining, constricting. And Afghan women, depending on what their circumstances are, may feel that same way, that they don't have an outlet, that they don't have a way to connect with the outside world and to experience that hope that light gives you. What do you hope people will take away after reading this book? I hope that people will take away that the women of Afghanistan are strong, courageous, brave, smart, funny, daring, all of those things. Uh, they really are championing their own causes. They're paving the way for their role in the future of the country. And they are creative in finding solutions for their families, for themselves. And I think that there's a lot of reform happening. There's a lot of effort coming from the outside world. And that has to be done in a way that fits with the Afghan system, in a way that makes sense to the culture and to the, the, the tapestry of the country. And I think that slowly we'll get there. That was author Nadia Hashimi discussing her book, A House Without Windows.